So it's been a few months now since Runway added the ability to take text and turn it into video. You can now, however, use image prompts and you can see some of the really cool things that the users here have created. And I'll be doing that with some of my own images. And uh, we'll actually be working with an image that I created using a new type of adapter for stable diffusion. So we'll be seeing what that does when it's given one of the images that I created. Now, before we get into that, I want to remind you guys that I have got a couple of courses on stable diffusion and Comfy UI in SDXL. Uh, we've got a beginner's course here and also an advanced course. And I will give you some really amazing discounts in the description. Make sure you use those quickly, otherwise they tend to get used up fairly quickly. And uh, we'll be taking a look at this new feature, which is called the IP adapter from Tencent. And it's a really nice new adapter, which will work a little bit like a control net. Now it looks like the video that I created inside of a runway is ready. So let's see what that looks like. Okay. Okay. I can never get it to do exactly what I want it to do, but it, this is okay. This is the alien city monumental sculpt sculptures. Uh, I'll be showing you the images that I created inside of comfy UI. So this is one of the images here, a monumental sculpture above this kind of alien, th this city on an alien planet. And to get there, we, we brought in a, an image of Mount Rushmore, which I'm using as a control. And that image I got from Com from uh, Canva. So with Canva, I was able to download about four or five of these images, and we're going to use those as the sponsors for the depth map. And the depth map uh, is going to allow us to just control where the sculptures appear. Uh, there's obviously a text prompt, which is talking of the alien city and the sculptures, Mount Rushmore, all that type of stuff. I wanted to create a classical feel. So you've got some classical architecture here, uh, and that's supposed to represent a city. It's supposed to be an actual planet where you can see these giant sculptures coming out of the rock. And uh, the, the, the software did a fine job. It actually kind of represented more or less exactly what I wanted here. Took a few attempts though. And uh, you can see the depth map that we got. I found with the depth maps that it really helped if you're using an HDR image, which I was doing there. And uh, with the depth map, it really correlated strongly with the results that we got. And uh, you can see Abe Lincoln, you can see I think that's Washington. So you can see the depth map where you've got a good depth map. It can work with the control net really well. Here I was not using a control net. I was using T2i adapters, which gave me a little bit more aesthetic freedom because the control nets will take a look at a couple of control net examples, which they're fine, but they don't give me the same aesthetic results. And the input image was this guy here who seems to be uh, ready for any type of campaign that you want to throw it at him. So that was the basic idea. So take a depth map, T2i adapters, then you take the uh, IP adapters and you give it a prompt and an image and it produces something quite amazing. Now I was working with SD 1.5, so the images are expected to be 512 by 512, but I ended up expanding the images quite a lot into a landscape. Uh, and I think I'm using Dream Shaper as the model and it allowed me to create images that were fairly large, much larger than the standard 512 by 512. And most of them look quite okay. So let's take a look at a few cherry picked examples. This is one here, which I think, uh, I think this guy was involved in the, in the COVID uh, inf information wars there. I think he lost. And uh, we, we saw him created into these monumental sculptures. So it's basically the same theme. We've got the city at the front, the alien city. We've got the monumental sculptures. And my, he's looking, he's looking impressive there. They did a good job with their sculpture. And if you're wondering what, what an ordinary photograph would look like, I use this ordinary one, same control. Uh, here we're using a T2i adapter uh, and it was beautiful. It's kind of like this surreal image. This does look like a movie poster, doesn't it? And one now with a control net. This is one of the control net ones. And I tell you that the control net ones, I, I didn't like them aesthetically. Um, this is the woman, the input, the depth map is again, one of the Canva Rushmore, Mount Rushmore images. And it's figured out, yeah, the, the trees there, um, the sculptures in the background, depth map wasn't as good. And I felt the aesthetics of the control net, something seemed a little bit off with every one of the control, control nets that I used. Uh, and I didn't like the overall effect with the T2i adapters. Sometimes it worked really well. 
And sometimes you've got results like this where it just looked a bit ridiculous. So I found with this particular one, it just didn't translate into something that was good. Uh, but with the T2i adapters, generally speaking, I got better results uh, with the input images. I really like this one with this Roman Gladiator. And uh, you've got him represented reasonably well there and there. And uh, he's really looking like, oh, they made some kind of some kind of metallic golden statue out of him. And he's looking impressive there. It's all looking kind of Roman and gladiatorial over here. And that was intentional. I used that in the text prompt. Another control net here. And the control net ones were, th there was something about the color, something about the contrast that just didn't seem right. Again, there's something to do with the contrast and the color that just didn't seem right. We've got the same thing happening here, but this was probably the best control net one that I got. After that, I started using the T2i adapters. And then there were some uh, really funky ones. This one was using the same image as the depth map. And we ended up with this really fascinating result, which uh, gave me the confidence to try other, other, other depth maps. But there were some earlier examples that I did where uh, I was telling it just the, the basics, just give me some sculptures that are coming out of the granite rock. And oh, it does a fantastic job, even without the control net. Uh, it actually generally does a, f a fantastic job. You can see these are some of the examples here and uh, some of the small examples and some of the enlarged examples. This one was where we were not using a control net at all. So we were just using the, the image prompt and the text prompt. And once again, we're kind of asking for something that looks a little bit like a Mount Rushmore. So you can see, yeah, they're sort of coming out of the mountains to be sure. It's supposed to be gigantic. We've got our lady there who is the inspiration, the text prompt or the image prompt rather. And uh, she's looking like she's being used as the inspiration in, in, in quite a nice way there. Uh, it's also possible to do some abstracts. So this was one of the abstracts that I did where we took this image, no depth map or anything, and then just gave it free reign to produce something amazing. And it did so with producing this particular outcome here. And uh, this one I liked. Uh, I thought this was a really nice um, attempt to play on this image and just create something really dynamic, really original. And this is one where we took an abstract image, gave it that monumental statue prompt, and it did something pretty cool with that. It was able to produce something that both resembles this and the kind of monumental statue that I wanted, that, that I was looking for. So it's a very creative way of working and it allows you just the right amount of control. Uh, it allows you to give the software just the right amount of freedom to get the results that you want. So you can use it in this type of way. You can use it to create all sorts of results. And uh, the ones that I was using, they weren't perfect by any means. There were some, some errors that I encountered, not that frequently, but occasionally did encounter some errors. And with some of the files, they were prone to errors. This is, I think, the one that we used in the runway animation. And uh, you can see again there, this is SD 1.5, but it's a huge image. We managed to, to create some extremely large images from uh, SD 1.5. Now, there are also some abstract ones. So that's a helix being used to create this image. And you can see it in the enlarged version here. It's, it's something which is kind of original, but sometimes you can trace it back to the, to the source image. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, but, uh, yeah, very, very, very creative and very powerful way of working with images and, and, and text prompts. Now in the paper for this particular uh, IP adapter, what they say is that in this work, we propose IP adapter to achieve image prompt capability for the pre-trained text to image diffusion models. The core design of the IP adapter is based on our, on a decoupled cross attention strategy, which incorporates separate cross attention layers for image features. Uh, and they say both qualitative and experimental results demonstrate that the IP adapter with only 22 million parameters performs comparably or even better than some finely tuned image prompt uh, models and existing adapters. And to be sure, it was very, very fast when I was using it. It was incredibly fast. It was almost like there was nothing there. It was almost like, hey, this is not taking up any extra time at all. So the IP adapter has started to appear on uh, on GitHub from Tencent. And uh, they've got some uh, stuff here that you can take a look at if you want to. And also we've got some uh, models over on um, 
over on Hugging Face. So I'll link to these. And if you want to take a look at that, take a closer look at it. Uh, remember, I've, I'm going to probably start including these in the courses. I'm probably going to have some lectures coming up in the courses. I did find that there were one or two problems with some of the files, but once I'm a little bit more confident that everything's good, uh, I think I'll include a couple of lectures. And if you want to see whether or not uh, it's been, the IP adapters have been included, you can come to the course content and just open up the, the, the sections. Most likely it's going to be in the, uh, the advanced course for Comfy UI and SDXL. So just come here and check for uh, to see whether the IP adapters have been included. And also I do have another course for automatic 1111. So I might update that one as well, but uh, I'm not hundred percent sure as yet whether I'm going to be working on that soon. But anyway, I'll have uh, discounts for these in the description. So hopefully see you over there.